Well, everybody, I can't be happier to say, or I couldn't be happier to say, I should say, that uh, Hassan has lately dropped in public approval rating in the eyes of much of this sphere of the left. It's been very frustrating to me as, like, countless red flags in the last two years, maybe three years, have come up for me when it comes to Hassan. In the last year in particular, they've been the most egregious and the most impossible to ignore. And no matter how much I bring them up or try to at least, you know, make them a point of discussion, people get hyper offended and want to defend him. And I get it. Hassan has been, for quite a while, a pretty damn effective mouthpiece for left-wing ideas. Hassan is like the ultimate normie bait dude bro of online lefty political content. He appeals to normies, he's really good at like immersing himself into Twitch culture, he is in the super high level clout sphere of Twitch streamers. He's just, he checks all the boxes for somebody who has the values that you have, or would think that you have, um, that you would want advocating for your ideas. He's just, he, for a long time, whether you liked him or not, whether you thought he was annoying or cringe or maybe a little dumb, at the very least, you could agree upon that. Until the Ukrainian versus Russian war went down, where Russia invaded Ukraine, and basically at every turn, both before the invasion itself and throughout, Hassan was literally parroting every single Russian propaganda talking point to defend Russia and justify its actions changing and moving the goalpost as he goes. First, it was that Russia wasn't going to invade. Then it was that Russia's invasion uh, is justified, just like, according to him, the invasion of Crimea and its annexation. Um, and it goes down the line. And more recently, he got into a big debate on stream with uh, his co-host uh, of a podcast he runs, uh, Ethan Klein, on Taiwan and whether or not it should be part of China. Um, and should be, you know, just part of their their empire, right? And he, of course, is a simp for any authoritarian regime that simps for, for communism in name only. And so, sure enough, he defends China. And it caused a pretty big falling out with him and Ethan, from what I could tell. And, uh, yeah, he, he just is in favor of anything that isn't America and is anti-America, more specifically. Um, so, recently everyone's kind of woken up to this fact, despite me saying Hassan is cringe for this reason for the last, like, year and getting nonstop pushback for it. Some people just outright saying, I shit you not, I got multiple comments on videos in which I called out Hassan for defending Russia and China and attacking the people who are being, in the case of China, genocided and in the case of Russia, invaded for the purpose of uh, imperialist expansion, uh, like like insulting the victims and calling them like effectively crisis actors. I mean, is there really much difference between what Hassan's doing when it, and what Alex Jones did? Anyway, yeah, I'm always right. I'm very used to it at this point. I'm I'm always very right with lots of pushback. Moving on though. Lots of people more recently, though, have figured out that Hassan is, you know, in the wrong. But back then, I unironically got multiple comments, as I was saying, that just outright said, yes, Hassan is wrong for saying those things, but I don't care. He's a more valuable tool for the left than you because he's hotter. And I guess there's a certain level of merit there. Like, I, there's cert, like, people are more willing to listen to someone who's more attractive. Like, if you hear someone who's attractive say any take, and then someone who's less attractive say another take, or even the same take, you're probably more likely to lend credence to the attractive person who said it, or to believe the attractive person more likely, which I suppose is fine. But that doesn't really acknowledge the fact that the beliefs Hassan is now peddling quite regularly are antithetical to the values that, I would hope, we hold. So it doesn't matter in this case, because that's not a factor playing into any positive for the left. In reality, Hassan for a long time has just been a clout-chasing 
sort of grifter. I think he believes what he believes, but I think a lot of his advocacy uh, is centered around what is popular right now. And I don't think he really has as much of an emotional stake in a lot of the particularly social causes that, you know, bring a lot of people to these figures as he may would make you think or would want you to think. And I think it's quite obvious. Uh, Hassan, for example, despite having a pretty large trans audience and like very regularly like virtue signaling about how pro-trans he is and about how he debates and destroys transphobes and transphobia, Hassan is notoriously extremely weak at debating trans like transphobes or even arguing against transphobia. Like, Hassan has had a habitual weakness in doing this, but he still virtue signals about how good at he is at it and how often he does it when he defends himself against criticism. And what that feels like to me is that, really, he doesn't want to put in the effort or work to research these topics to be able to concisely debate bigots on that type of subject matter, but he recognizes the popularity there is in making content around that subject matter and just wants to virtue signal off of announcing his opinion on it but not really solidifying his opinion on it if that makes sense but if you talk to him about some pseudo uh communist theory or tanky shit or horrible foreign policy take he'll jabber on for hours like he knows what he's talking about um, but, you know, he stutters when debating a, a notorious transphobe on his stream and ends up just platforming him to his audience. Anyway, that's the introduction I have for you guys for Hassan. Maybe a little long-winded, but I feel it's somewhat valuable. Chank Uger is the, like, lead face of the Young Turks. A large political media company online that used to be quite left-wing, but these days does not hold that reputation. Because one of the other head faces of TYT, Anna Kasparian, basically decided to jump ship and come out as a grifter. She just out of nowhere decided to start taking issue with inclusive language being used in the writing of laws and medical terminology that includes trans men in... Uh, like certain policy around say birth control because it may be relevant that a trans man who is not a woman can still give birth and so that may be medically relevant for certain writings and certain me like legal documentation she saw that and got really upset at the term birthing person you see i i i guess a lot of people assume she's like an old school feminist that saw this as degrading in some way because she likes the word woman and likes women empowerment or whatever but in reality, it was a the first step of a clear switch in political identity for her online persona. And after that, she started going on small, like, grift tube right-wing podcasts to talk about leaving the left and how she's now politically homeless. And Shank Uger, all along the way, has been defending her quite strongly. So, I don't like either of these people. I dislike Shank Uger, and I dislike Hassan Piker. Frankly, I could go on for hours more about how much I dislike them and how much I would like to see their downfall. However, instead, we've got a debate to watch. Recently, Hassan debated his own uncle, Chank Uger, on trans issues of all things. You see, Chank, along with the rest of TYT and Anna Kasparian, have decided they are not going to take as a... Uh, you know, they're not going to take a strong position in favor of, say, non-binary people's validity or the validity of xenogenders or, um, or, or just anything that someone like Destiny would say is made up as far as trans people go. They see this as a distraction and they see it as giving ammo to the right. This is, of course, ridiculous. Um, there have always been people who are just too hesitant to go, quote unquote, too far to the left and get, quote unquote, too accepting. Uh, and it's always been bullshit. It's always just been people who are too hung up on their biases, uh, trying to justify their biases without admitting that it comes from a place of internalized bigotry. It's very obvious that that's what it is. Um, but in the case of TYT, in large part, I think it's them trying to appeal to a more moderate audience after the Bernie era 
now coming to an end. Like, Bernie is done as far as, like, presidential potential. There's really no, like, financial incentive to put yourself behind socialism when you're in the, like, place of TYT uh, or even, like, social democracy right now. So appealing more to, like, moderate liberals and being like, hey, yeah, this whole, you know, woke liberal stuff maybe is a little too crazy. Let's, but, you know, the right wing stuff's not the, the best, you know, the don't be a Nazi. That's where they're at right now, it seems, because that's the more, in their eyes, profitable long term uh, uh, venture for their company. Um, and, you know, to be fair, there aren't really any big presidential figures that are socialist or social democrat, like hyper left leaning with a big populist pull that are really getting big right now. Um, if they were, I'd know their names. Um, so, yeah, I can see why a lot of people in this sphere that are just motivated by money. And let's be clear, TYT was business. They were motivated by money. Um would be kind of jumping ship right now. And so I guess this has led to Hassan, who has a... I think Hassan is not transphobic. I don't think Hassan is lying when he says he's not transphobic, but I think he's lying when he says that he is in any way educated or well-rounded in his opinion on trans people. Like, I don't think Hassan is very knowledgeable on why trans people are valid and you can say it's just because they like trans people say their identity is what it is and that's how it is and you know because they said so but as far as arguing to an audience why that's the case i don't think he's capable but let's see maybe he's improved since the last time i watched him debate this topic i hate both these people so watching this debate is going to be really interesting i am going to like turn up the speed on this because uh you know I don't want this to literally go on for fucking ever. You know how often I pause. Tend that I brought it up. No, you brought it up and you made it a giant issue and you're the one hurting the progressive cause and the trans rights cause. We win on every goddamn issue on trans rights. Why are you going and dying on the hill that no one agrees with you on? You're gonna ruin trans rights on other issues. Okay. We're gonna lose because you're being so extreme. And then every ally you have, you're like- At no point in human history has the being extreme of, uh, like, a minority group, like, has that minority group being extreme and fighting for their rights resulted in a long-term worse outcome for them? That has never, ever been the case at any point in history. Many times in history, people have argued it would happen and were wrong during the Civil Rights Movement, during Stonewall, during the suffrage, the women's suffrage movement, and the fight for women to uh, have the right to work, many people made this argument that said, this is the white moderate argument. Basically, um, well, let's let's bring it up. It's the classic uh, letter for from Birmingham jail. This is a quote from uh, Martin Luther King Jr. while he was in jail in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, I believe. I must make two honest confessions to you, my Christian and Jewish brothers. First, I must confess that over the last few years, I have been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that black people's great stumbling block in the stride towards freedom is not the white citizen's counselor, the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice. This is the more, you know, because this is in reference to racial politics. This is the part that is the most important here. I don't know if you would use the term white moderate and have it be nice saves. It. Listen, I d like my f I feel like the best way to put into words the way that language has evolved in this re in this sense is that one scene. I, I say scene, but that one instance in the Stephen King books of the Dark Tower where, um, uh, Eddie and Detta are on the beach with Roland and Eddie is a dude like like just a white dude from like the late 80s and Detta is a black woman from the 50s and so whenever Eddie refers to her as a black woman because that's more polite than as what she would consider politically correct she gets really offended and says what did you just call me black the fuck like, excuse me? And gets quite upset. <laughs> because at the time in the 50s, the term that I just censored was the more politically correct one. 
language changes a lot, and uh, I'm not trying to cap a ban or ca catch a ban. I can't speak today. I'm very stoned and also a little tired because I woke up way too early after staying up way too late. Um, anyway, it's not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klaner, but the white moderate who is more devoted, and this is the important part, who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, with, which is the absence of tension, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you. I want you to imagine this quote coming, like, imagine this in Chank Uger's voice. I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I can't agree with your methods of direct action who paternalistically feels that he can't set the timetable for another man's fr or that you can't set the timetable for another man's freedom who lives by the myth of time who constantly advises the black american to wait until a more convenient season quote unquote shallow understanding from people of goodwill is more frustrating than absolute misunderstanding from people of ill will lukewarm acceptance is much more bewildering than outright rejection now, obviously, not all of this applies because it's in reference to racial politics in the 1960s, but I want you guys to really think about that quote and look at how it applies to Cenk Uger, assuming we're taking the most charitable like interpretation of him and what he's saying. Assuming that we are assuming that he is completely honest and not part of some TYT-motivated grift to move to the right for money— um, and he's being completely honest and he's just succumbed to the gas leak and he's genuinely just moved into Stupidville lately, then best case scenario, he is essentially just taking the white moderate position on trans rights in regards to non-binary trans rights. Nope, nope. I'm going to be more pure than them, so I'm going to burn their bridge down. I don't want any allies. Okay, okay. well, then don't have any allies. Oh, my God. I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> All right. Cenk Uger uh, is here, ladies and gentlemen. It's a, it's a classic uncle-nephew face-off, as I have uh, talked about already. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Cenk wrote a book. <laughs> this is a f in the face. Cenk wrote a book called Justice is Coming, How Progressives Are Going to Take Over the Country and America is Going to Love It, which is, I mean, I'm a very cynical person. I, I, I don't think... I'm a very pessimistic person. I don't think it's happening anytime soon, but maybe you'll make an. You know what's interesting? It's interesting how Chank Uger and the other TYT people like to pretend that what got them canceled, quote unquote, was them not being pure enough for the online left. When that's not it at all. Not being pure enough for the online left generally isn't what will put you under a constant firestorm in the same way that TYT has been. It'll get you into occasional sporadic dramas and cancellations, for sure, but it won't inundate you in the constant vitriol that TYT has gotten, deserved vitriol, I should add, um, that TYT has gotten, at least not that alone. What really does it, like, let's take, for example, uh, what's his name? Dave Pakman. David Pakman. He is a ostensibly left-wing political commentator who is very liberal, in no way socialist, not even really social democrat on most issues, just very, very liberal. He's, But he's very upfront about his positions, and he doesn't just flip-flop on them. When his positions change, he explains why, and like it, it may even happen on camera as he researches a topic. Um, or as he explains a story or a bit of data he didn't know about prior that has changed his opinion on something. Um, there's no just suddenly he's changed up his position on something. David Pakman never presented himself as a socialist and then all of a sudden was defending the Bolivian coup. People overall were expecting a reaction like that, you know, and expect things like that from here on out. Because that's the kind of commentator that he quite honestly presents himself himself as. The problem is, for a very long time, TYT presented themselves as, like, the founder of the Resistance Democrats. The founders of the Resistance Democrats. Um, the, like, headliners of this, like, progressive Gen Z online media sphere that was pro-trans and totally open to this newfangled Gen Z stuff. But then all of a sudden they're talking about how birthing person is offensive to women and they're like 
platforming right wing people and they're like leaving the left and saying they're politically homeless. This is a very clear flip flop in what they had, you know, marketed themselves as to their own audience for a long time. And that's a big part of why there's been such a massive amount of hate for TYT. It's not that they weren't pure enough. It's that for a long time, they established themselves as a at a certain point, so to say, on the political compass. And then all of a sudden, within a span of a couple months, they moved like if I were to ballpark it, like six tiles towards the center. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's it was noticeable, and I think a lot of fans felt betrayed. An argument for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about your book, and we're going to talk about another thing that you literally didn't tell me while you were announcing it, uh, which is that you're running for president. Uh, and, and, of course, I'm going to ask you why. <laughs> amazing. A uh, freaking amazing. It's nothing but a scheme to make money. They, like, guys, it's nothing but a scheme to make money. Running for president, if you do it right, can be a pretty significant money-making strategy. Yeah, he couldn't even win a congressional seat. He knows he can't win. He's, for, However he's doing it, this is a ploy to make money, whether it be in the long term or the short term. Or even how, but that's it. That's uh, those are those are some of the things that we're going to be talking about. Before we get into any of that, though, let's start off with uh, the Democrats actually doing something that is uh, unheard of, unimaginable, which is showing backbone. All smart progressives are going in the same exact direction, right? Yeah. So I've been on that direction. Yeah, so my my co-host Anna's obsessed with the labor movement. Uh, totally believes that's the answer. Nina Turner, who's another host on our network, just announced today that she set up a new group uh, with Chris Smalls to to back the labor movement. For those that don't know, like TYT has its fingers in like. A lot of the Democratic Party. Like, TYT is way more powerful than you guys know. It has its roots in so much of the Democratic Party, you guys don't even know. It, they're, they're very influential, TYT is. You should be worried about the fact that TYT has taken such a significant turn to the right, because that signifies that the Democratic Party, as a whole very likely their strategy going forward in the into the next election is to present themselves as more moderate that might be their strategy going forward and to even get funding for the labor movement whenever they go on strike etc and so that's what pushed fdr that's what's going to push the next generation everything is trending in our direction the only thing is we can't you know uh, snatch defeat from the jaws of victory and and the there's two icebergs ahead and so i'm not pollyannish i see the icebergs probably better than anybody else does and i'm really worried about it okay one is uh, the progressive movement honestly and this is where you and i can begin to disagree um getting too radical and too away from what uh most americans want and the second iceberg what do you what do you mean by that yeah so look uh we so saying things like uh all sports leagues including professional ones in my opinion, no position that says you should let people live their lives as they please as long as they're not hurting anybody is radical. I'm sorry, you can't sell me on that, Chank. It is not radical to say that a person who wants to identify as whatever they want to identify as, as long as they're not hurting anybody, should be left alone and respected as you would any other person. I genuinely don't think that's very radical. I think it's actually a very basic, fundamental aspect of human decency, actually. What's your thoughts, chat? Because I genuinely feel as though this is being, like, the idea of... So, recently there's been a lot of discourse with, like, transmedicalism and shit like that around, uh, uh, like, uh, transmedicalist takes and neopronouns and xenogenders, and it's always comes back around to a friend of mine, Doe, who just seems to be the xenogender neopronoun-using person. Not even neopronoun. It, it, it's is not neopronouns. They're, they're actually... It, it's is actually a very long-standing uh, existing set of pronouns in the human uh, English language. Um, but, like, xenogender-identifying uh, person... Uh, within like the online left has just become like the the center of all that discourse um wh why uh, that doesn't hurt anybody like doe existing doesn't hurt anybody why does it have to be the source of discourse 
I, it, it, it's very frustrating to me that so much of a community that is supposed to be centered around fighting for people's rights to just exist and do their thing are so hyper fixated on debating about the validity of people's identities. Why? Why is that, why, why do I, like, when I would be on Twitter, why would there be a weekly discourse about whether or not, uh, uh, what was it, um, uh, I, f I forget what the term was, bi-lesbians are valid. Why, why was there always discourse about whether or not bi-lesbians is valid, are valid? Who cares? Who cares whether or not you think there's a group of, like, teenage twed uh, uh, Reddit, or, sorry, teenage Tumblr dwellers who've made up a new gender to feel special that are do that are like using it online. How does that affect you in any negative way? Why do you need to go on a rant about how this is somehow destroying the left and harming our ability to do effective advocacy? The right will always have something to use as their ammo against any minority group for their propaganda. There will always be a black person out there who committed a crime that Nazis on 4chan will use to say, see, this is what black people do. There will always be a trans person somewhere who has a mental breakdown in a store for being misgendered that right-wingers will put in their compilations. There will always be a feminist somewhere who dares to make a funny face while having an argument or a debate that will be screenshotted and used as a meme for a, over a decade to strawman the left. It doesn't matter how how much you try to acquiesce to the right's insane dedication to smear the left and the people that they despise. It doesn't matter how much you try to acquiesce. They're evil, and they don't care. Has to allow trans women, they don't have a choice, etc. That pulls it like 2%. You say, hey, it's a moral issue. It's really important. Do you think the it's sports a, leagues are like the most important thing in the you, whole you, wide world? Do you think it's actually a significant issue? Do you think that that is a significant issue or a driver of the conversation, or so, cynically weaponized by Republicans with like some liberals taking the bait and then having a conversation about it instead of being like, "Fuck off, nobody cares about this. Stop talking about this immediately." Yeah. Well, that's exactly what the right wing does. They weaponize every single issue. What I'm trying to get progressives to do is stop falling in the trap. So do, the minute they say it, do you think, our side comes out and goes, no, this is the most important issue. Do, and anyone who disagrees is a Nazi. You just called 98% of the country Nazis. Okay. What are you doing? You're okay. alienating voters like crazy. Do you, okay? Do you, okay. Do you think that most people who advocate for the validity of, of like non-binary people and xenogender and neo-pronoun identifying people... Do you think the majority of those people call anyone who disagrees or doesn't understand that, like, a Nazi? Just straight up Nazi. I think there's probably a few. It's Twitter. It's the online left. There's definitely a few. But to try to characterize that as everybody who feels offended, hurt, and betrayed by the, you know, by the Young Turks' recent shift is um very uh very dishonest very dishonest very cope do you think that do you think that organizers on the ground both trans and cis that are uh or or uh, members of labor unions are uh even even using this as a talking point in any meaningful capacity or is it simply reactionary republicans bringing this up because they tried and unsuccessfully failed to push the anti-trans button with bathroom Except bills. Except for the fact that they pass all those bills, which I despise. No. I hate those Hold bills. On. Let me just... Let me so, there is a difference between Republican legislators currently holding seats in office who are able to pass bills because they have unanimous power within their local jurisdiction, and there being an election season, and those politicians running millions, tens of millions of dollars worth of ads on nothing but anti-trans shit and then it not motivating any of any of their voters to come out and vote for them and causing a massive uh drop in votes for republicans in 2022 midterms which was like massively portended for like months like they were saying oh yeah so it's already very clear this like anti-trans thing is not working for the republicans in the pre-election polling and then the election came about and all of the polling showed the exact prediction came true anti-trans rhetoric just does not win these people elections if they're already in power they'll pass the anti-trans policy because they just want trans people dead it's more of a 
actual ideological thing that they are motivated by um, than something they're using to get elected. But when they do try to use it to get get themselves elected, it doesn't work. It's the elections and the midterms that we're talking about here. If they're already in power, there's nothing you can really do besides try to impeach them, maybe. But we're talking about re-elections when we decide who's going to take their place. And the fact that them hyper-focusing hyper on transphobia and us fighting back against it is hurting them and reducing their chances of getting elected and re-elected. Let me just clarify something here. In the lead-up to the 2016 election, you had the North Carolina bathroom bill that was anti-trans, right? You have to have the gender assigned at birth uh, be... Yeah, I've heard a lot of normies say that the anti-trans ads that play in a lot of Republican states are really annoying and, like, repetitive and just cringe. The yeah. bathroom that you go to. That totally failed. Okay, right. that failed. That was so objectively a failure that Donald Trump came out and said, I don't give a fuck where Caitlyn Jenner shits as long as she's shitting in Trump Tower, right? Something yeah. along those lines. But I'm then paraphrasing. he tried to ban them from the military. Hold on. Let me finish. That was also unpopular. Sorry, go ahead. Let me finish. Okay? Yeah, he tried to ban, ban trans people from the military. That was also unpopular. So... The truth is any like overall it's like any overt attempt to blatantly infringe on the rights of LGBT people, no matter how uh like perceived uh like niche of a group it is, is going to be met with massive backlash from the mainstream. Um the Republicans hold power through a tyranny of the minority. Uh, through the Electoral College and through the massive disproportionate wealth that Republicans hold, um, this has always been, this has been the case. So, something you guys need—I'm really stun locking here, but it's relevant, I promise. Something you guys need to recognize is that prior to Bush, the Republican Party's main voter base were affluent, wealthy, educated city dwellers. That was the majority of the Republican Party's voter base. Not only that, but a pretty substantial portion of what, like, young people, 18 and, like, to 25, voted Republican prior to the Bush, uh, uh, especially the further back you go, um, prior to the Bush presidency. It was really once Bush became president, 9-11 happened, and all the shit that followed occurred that we started to see such a drastic sharp increase in the progressive values in younger successive generations and each year that a new gen like a new swath of people hit voting age the polls showed that the younger voting demographic was getting to be more and more leaning towards the democrats and with that in mind there's just it's just been on that, like, path for a while now. Like, that's just the way we're headed. That is not going to stop. That has been the consistent route that our country has been taking on the graph. When you look at these graphs for a long time, it's not slowing down. The increase in progressive uh, values among younger and younger voters is only getting sharper and more of a steep uh, increase. And uh, that's just not stopping. The Republicans are desperately spending massive amounts of money to try to stop that trend, but it's not working. It is a nearly unstoppable force going up against an absolutely, um, or sorry, it is an unstoppable force, an absolutely unstoppable force going up against a not quite unstoppable wall. What did Republican interest groups do? The family, uh, moral family. I don't know. I, I I butchered that 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 phrasing, but I think you guys understand what I mean. There's no stopping the progressiveness of Gen Z and and future generations, no matter how much the Republicans spend money and try to cheat the system. Uh, uh, Christianity fundamentalist uh, uh, groups. What did they do? They went back to the drawing board and they looked for a reasonable sidestep that would still be anti-trans, that would open the door to anti-trans conversations that, that they could push for that was more popular. What did they find? They found that Americans love the concept that is bullshit, meritocracy. What is the most meritocratic process in the, in the entire country, uh, maybe in the world? Sports. Americans love sports, and Americans believe that meritocracy is real, and it's especially real in sports. So they changed the narrative away from trans people can't pee and poo in the fucking bathrooms to trans people want to destroy sports. It was simply just another way to attack trans people, which is...
I straight up like bite the bullet on the on the sports thing, I guess you could say, and here's my take. I say I don't give a shit whether or not we segregate sports by gender. I, I genuinely think that we shouldn't. Um, I, I don't think that I, I don't think we should segregate it by gender if if that's like the trade off, if it's like the enfranchisement of an entire minority group or like the sports ball gets to be fair, um, then I take the enfranchisement of an entire minority group. Yeah. No, sorry. Yeah, I, I don't care enough about the like I literally like swam in high school and got two varsity letters like I, I certainly have done my fair share of putting in the hours and effort and dedication to a sport. Um, I could have gotten a scholarship off of my swimming. Um, like, my mom insisted that I try to get a scholarship off my swimming and go to college. And I didn't want to go to college, so I didn't. But, um, like, even with all that said, I genuinely don't give a shit about the fairness of sports. I don't. If the trade-off is, like, for sports to remain fair and for, the like, the Olympics to remain fair, quote-unquote then trans people have to be disenfranchised i i i don't then sports don't get to be fair Th then i think we should just vie for sports yeah who cares not to mention let's be completely honest here at the end of the day all of these stringent guidelines that uh republicans have like tried to force onto uh these sports organizations have actually had more negative res like uh uh effects on cis women than it has trans women and trans men because they've they, they've like set these arbitrary testosterone limits and sometimes notably this has a racial bias black women will surpass those uh uh those limits and be deemed as having too much testosterone to compete it has happened numerous times now and they were cis women. So these standards don't just hurt trans people, they hurt cis people too. And it's all just this desperate, paranoid, like, des desperate desire to keep a group of people that is an infinitesimally small fraction of the population of people involved in sports from having a supposedly unfair advantage. When, let's be honest, if you're actually going to try to, like, like use this as some way of cheating then you better already be like one of the best athletes in the world because like th it's not that easy <laughs> yeah they've done it with chess too like do you really think do you really think that chess needs to be segregated by gender are men like more like are, is there a scientific study that shows that men are literally biologically more capable at chess than women what about curling what about professional javelin throwing? Like, I get it for sports that are contact sports, I guess. Maybe. But what But what about sports that don't involve physical contact and the chance of getting, like, battered around by each other? Like, it, it really makes no sense other than trying to just outright say to the world, you think that women are inferior to men and they just wouldn't be able to get anywhere in sports if they were, like, in the same league. Why couldn't there just be, like, a list of the best? Why couldn't you just have a championship for leagues of the best uh, people in certain, like, uh, 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 like, what's it called? Um, uh, uh, God, they do this in, um, yeah, surfing too, of course. That's an example of a stupid one. Um, they do this in esports, where, like, there are different leagues, of uh of skill like you've got like the these are people who've just gotten into it and they're they're like promising but they're not like at the tier of the people who sell out entire stadiums to watch them here are the people who are like really popular they've got big twitch presences and they show up at a lot of events but they haven't won any huge things and here's the guys who are the top of the top they bring home trophies they win millions of dollars they've got coaches in a fucking stronghold somewhere like they do that in esports why can't we do that with, like, normal sports? I'm pretty sure that would allow for plenty of cis women to compete with plenty of cis men and trans women and cis and uh, trans men, vice versa, and likewise in all these leagues. Like, I, I don't know. 
it just seems like people are so married to this idea of there being gender segregation in sports when when you really think about it long enough it's just kind of stupid it's precisely why i think a lot of people correctly looked at that and went what the fuck are we talking about this this is all like weight class and wrestling but with more categories exactly kendrick uh kiggins i feel like people who've done wrestling will understand what i'm talking about more here because like what matters more than gender or sex when it comes to a fight in wrestling is body weight and skill. Like body weight and knowing how to use your body weight. Like does anybody here in, in chat, have they ever done wrestling, jujitsu, MMA, anything like that? And had like a slightly more experienced girl grapple with a, le a slightly less experienced dude and she just whoops his ass every time? They're in a similar weight class, and that's why they got teamed up. And it's just because at that level, when you consider those factors, yeah, they're on pretty fair footing, except for the skill area, and that's why she won. Ultimately marginal, you just want to fucking eliminate trans people from uh, public spaces. And I have never given an ounce uh, of, of legitimacy to that. I, I say this because I have. I did jujitsu when I was younger, and there were plenty of girls that just beat the asses of the less experienced dudes. Some were even lighter than said dudes because they knew how to throw around their opponent's weight and didn't need to have their own weight to throw around. Um, and it was particularly like clear when the um, coaches would roll. You see... Obviously, they weren't doing, like, cross-gender matches or anything like that. But if it was, like, after practice, and it was just, like, the gym's going to close in an hour, and it's, like, time for a little bit of cool-down, the coaches would have a cool-down uh, grapple on the mat. And everybody would sit, like, stand back and watch the coaches. And our coach was a cis woman. And she was, at the time, like, I think maybe a brown belt with a stripe? now solidly black belt for many years um and uh now runs her own brazilian jiu-jitsu gym in tampa florida um my, maybe it's moved but last i heard it was in tampa um so yeah she's very much moved up in the world by the by this point um but uh uh she would kick the dude's asses who were just one belt level or a few stripes lower than her that ran the gym with her as like teachers she would kick their asses, and they were not letting her win. Trust me, you could tell they were not letting her win, but she won. And she overwhelmed them with speed and with skill and just knew what she was doing. She was also pretty stocky, so she she was, like, just pretty built for, for like, fighting, you know? She was just good at it. Um, and uh, she kicked their asses. I've seen it happen. Like, you can't bullshit me and say it's not possible. An argument, despite what public polling says, because the when people say that that this is like women can't like have a fair shake against men in sports. It's like a flat earther telling me the earth is round or the, the earth is round. The earth is flat. When I've seen footage of it from space, I've seen videos of GoPros sent up on balloons where it doesn't cut at all, you watch as it gets, like, lifted off the ground and floats and floats and floats and floats and floats, goes up through the clouds, floats, 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 floats. The sky starts to turn black, and then eventually you're in space, you can see the curvature of the Earth, and the balloon pops from the lack of pressure, because it just, like, pulls the, like, the, the helium all out of it, and just pops the balloon, because you're in the vacuum of space at that point, and then, um, and then it just falls all the way to the ground. Like, that's not fake. These videos are from, like, the 90s, too, when you couldn't fake that convincingly. I don't know. Like, it's the... I, don't, I feel like I stunlocked a bit there, but it, it feels like a flat earther telling me the earth is flat when I know it's round, when someone says that women can't have a fair shake in sports against men. Um, it really is just people acquiescing to conservative, uh, like, hysteria. Reality is, no one gives a fuck about it. Let me tell you something that's more important. Good lord, it's been 45 minutes and we've watched six minutes of this debate. Has there ever been a more stark example of the difference between me and Hassan's style of reaction? This video is now 45 minutes and 30 seconds long. We have watched six minutes of the debate. Well, there you go. Also, I have to point this out. 
either Hassan's camera is like massively warped or Hassan's house is on like an incline. Does his house exist on a hill or something? Because this is not level. None of this is level. This room is like slanted to the right. I'm not the only one seeing this, right? His camera is tilted? Okay. Because that does not look like a level room by any means. How are things not rolling and falling? That's fallen, the, the Bernie sign that you guys can't see behind my camera. Important in the public polling, however. Because you brought so, up. So far, I don't even see where we disagree. Okay, so you brought up legislatures, state legislatures, Republicans like passing incredibly horrifyingly. Chank's gotten so right wing, he's weighing reality down to the right just by being in the room and on camera. Psychotic anti trans bills. Yeah. Okay? And they're passing this. Yet there is no viable single issue voter out there that is like desiring these anti trans bills. Although, if you ask, uh, you know, Americans directly about like, what do you think about a 14 year old trans girl like participating in a swim meet? They might say 56 percent might say, fuck that. That's wrong. We shouldn't do that. But the reality is there isn't any real momentum on the ground for anti trans shit. OK, voters. The reality is that the trans sports thing is a very weak point when it comes to the normie general consensus of opinion for the left. That's why it's one of the strongest points for the right to focus on. The problem is, for the right at least, it doesn't motivate any electoral action. It just doesn't. Hassan is right here. Uh, I think he's arguing it fairly competently, uh, though I think I could argue it better. Um, no matter how much the polling shows that people don't necessarily agree with the whole trans people in sports thing, that opinion just does not motivate them to go out to the polls and vote with that opinion. It just doesn't. The data shows this very clearly. And you have no evidence to show that the general population is moving into a direction where that is going to influence their vote strongly. Do not give a fuck about trans people overall. The overwhelming majority of voters actually have apathy for trans people. They just don't care about it because they think that there's no trans people in their lives whatsoever. That's what happened. Republicans, means. however, have have kept on pushing the anti-trans button over and over again and made it their major fucking talking point. That's right. That has yielded horrifyingly bad results for them. And instead of like fucking assassinating Christopher Rufo, for example, who's one of the leading guys here. It, it, it has had very bad results to the Republicans, objectively. Just because the online culture war has been like very anti-trans lately because of all the like memes and shit does not mean that right now in the real world, the politics are going well for the right. Ron DeSantis is just currently the governor. And passing the the uh, pol the bills that he can in Florida that are anti-trans, that's not winning him the next election. In fact, it's causing more and more growing uh, like resistance against him uh, uh, than ever in Florida. Like just because their supporters like it does not mean the general population like these policies. And the previous midterm showed that what i'm saying is right chank has absolutely nothing to go on here he's just grasping at straws to try to say yeah but in some you know imaginary way this is actually really helping the republicans no it's not disney has florida by the balls any person who's like grown up in florida and knows florida's history knows how by the balls disney has florida disney owns the land that Disneyland and uh, or Disney World and a lot of the land around it is built on in a way that like you can't own land as a company or a normal person now like Disney owns the land like the Vatican owns the Vatican inside of Rome like the D Disney World land belongs to Disney not to Florida it's like a special long ago signed bill that Disney managed to get uh, signed or not bill, but a, a contract that Disney managed to get signed and lasts forever and cannot be destroyed. And among many other things, Disney helped basically helped to build Florida and has its roots everywhere. Ron DeSantis's war against Disney is only going to hurt him and it's going to hurt him bad. I promise you here the Manhattan Institute that was like doing the CRT stuff, doing the anti-trans stuff. Um, instead of going, 
dude, what the fuck are you doing? You ruined our midterm chances when Biden had a historically bad economy, when a red tsunami was supposed to happen. That was a major failure on their part, one that actually has led to Kevin McCarthy's ouster as the speaker right now, a domino effect of like the Republican Party imploding in and of itself, partially because the only thing that they have been looking for, the only thing that they have, the only tangible policy position is just increasing the dial of transphobia, but there's not enough people on the ground who are demanding it. And those who are demanding it are increasingly more psychopathic, which is pushing away normal fucking Republican voters who are just like, I just want tax cuts, man. Like, I'm racist, sure, but like, the fuck's going on? Like, I don't give a shit about this. Like, No, no. Most Republican voters that are like wedge issue voters don't wedge issue vote on tax cuts. Um, I think guns is actually the primary thing, funnily enough. Like, a lot of wedge issue voters... It's guns. The Democrats have solidly stated to all law-abiding legal gun owners that they are the political enemy of the Democratic Party and that the Democratic Party will not stop until guns are effectively eliminated uh, for legal ownership. And owning a gun is a criminal action, and you can simply cut down on gun violence and gun crime by making its ownership a crime itself. And so you see a gun, locked up, sent to prison. Which is the same logic as, like, let's make drugs illegal and make anybody who has drugs, even if they're a kid, a felon. And uh, let's, you know, let's make it a felony to manufacture, to use, to, co to consume, to have on you, no matter what quantity. Um, it's literally drug war logic, but yeah. Like, guns are the Democrats' drug war. And I have a feeling that, in hindsight, it'll be looked back on just as, uh, just as hatefully. At least I hope so. By the way, I think there's a difference between, like, gun safety legislation that's centered around reducing the likelihood of someone who might use a gun for bad things to go through legal uh, processes to obtain a firearm. I think policies that try to prevent that are fine. My problem are policies that try to prevent legal law-abiding gun owners from owning certain guns at all restrictions on what guns can be owned i'm not a big fan of outside of certain scenarios i although i do think you should if you can go through rigorous training and pay the money and get the permits i think you should be able to own an rpg so you can blow up like old junker cars on your like 500 acre property in the middle of the desert if that's what you want to do yeah, no, I I think that's fine. Yeah, no, that's that's my take. I'm done with this video, by the way. I, I I'm done with this debate. It's pretty uninteresting to me overall. Hassan is like very middlingly defending uh his like these positions. It's enough to at least get his chat to spam trans rights or human rights, which I appreciate, even though they're all a bunch of tankies who like Russia, which the these guy you, you guys know it's a crime. It is literally a crime punishable by prison to expose a child to any media that has a gay person in it in Russia, right? When people like Hassan and his fan base like simp for Russia, they're simping for a country where you will go to jail if you show a child the scene from the Adventure Time series finale where Marceline and Princess Bubblegum kiss on your iPhone in the street. The cops will tackle you, put you in a chokehold, throw you in a car, and you will rot in a Russian prison cell. That is the country these people simp for. I, I just need you guys to remember that. Uh, just keep that in your mind uh, whenever you see Hassan fans spamming trans rights or human rights. Just, just a little, little important detail.